Good evening. I'm Clarice Tinsley. 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 Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'll be honest, I am not a morning person. I wake up at the crack of 10. If my husband is home, mm -hmm. I love being able to hang out with Stephen. So, uh, so what do you got going on today? What are you working on? Um, got some stuff to tape, and then I got some stuff to write when I get in, but I'm gonna work out a little bit. I love my husband too. Bits. We've been married for 31 years, and he is the man of my dreams. He's my best friend. He sees a side of me that you don't see, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. Detroit, Michigan is my home, born and raised, Motown. We were so proud to know that our music was going like not just to America, but all over the world. The Temptations, uh, The Supremes, The Four Tops, Martha and the Vandella, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, Stevie Wonder, down the street like one block away from our house. I grew up with a very strong identity as a black girl and as an American and as a citizen of the city of Detroit. I was very very proud of my race as a child. Tired of being kicked about by the brutal feet of oppression. Oh God, and the, the civil rights movement really made a very strong impression on me and I kind of think part of that informed why I wanted to become a journalist because in Detroit my parents were able to vote. I was able to go places. I wasn't um, touched by segregation. But seeing segregation in the South, seeing people who looked like me and all they wanted to do was vote or sit at a lunch counter, that really made an impression because I'm like, wait a minute, they're American citizens. They live in this country. Why can't they do this? I can do it. Why can't they do it? That, that society or someone could say, well, you can't do this because you don't have enough money or you don't have the right pedigree or the color of your skin is wrong, or your gender is not the right gender. That made me very, very angry. But then I looked at my mom and I thought, well, she took that and she made it really work for her. And not only for her, she's making it work for her students because these are the people whose lives she's touching in a really deep and important way, and a very lasting way. My mother is 93 and she still has students who are now probably grandparents they call Mrs. Tinsley, and they've introduced their children to Mrs. Tinsley. I mean, that's, that's a legacy. When I got to college, Wayne State University in Detroit, I majored in radio, TV, film. I fell in love with broadcast journalism in my freshman year, and the first newsroom I walked into was WXYZ in Detroit, Channel 7, and there were people who were coming and going, walking in and walking out. Back then we had typewriters so you could hear the typing. We had the wire machines, so it was like that clickety-clack that they would make. And I just, I was like the only person in that newsroom. I still get a chill when I think about it. I was so excited and I thought, this is what I want to do. I've got to do this. I got my four-year degree, one year ahead of schedule and I made uh, appointments with the three TV stations in Detroit. I'm like, hometown girl, I know the issues. I'm ready to get to work. And they're like, well, great, Ms. Tinsley, come back in five years when you have the experience. Uh, what? I was ready to go to work, and they're like, nope. Back then, I think Detroit was probably top 10 in terms of market size, so I had to go to smaller stations and then maybe work my way back. Milwaukee. Carl Zimmerman had like this amazing voice. So Carl Zimmerman called my mom at home because I'd used my home phone number. So then, I guess maybe five minutes later, Carl Zimmerman called me at work 
and said, we have an opening for a reporter. We'd love to fly you over if you're interested. And I'm like, of course, Mr. Zimmerman. So uh, July 13th, 1975, I got hired. The thing is I, that my newsroom at WITI in Milwaukee was very progressive. I was not the first black person to work in that newsroom behind the scenes. I was not the first black person on the air at that station. I wasn't the first woman on the air and there were very powerful women who were working behind the scenes. So for me that was a that was a great place to start. The pressure that I felt was being this kid coming right out of college. So I, I knew that they were probably sitting back like, oh yeah, who does this hotshot think she is? This is TV6 News at 10 with Clarice Tinsley. By the time I left, I was at that station for three and a half years. Not that I've learned everything about journalism because I'm still learning about that and I love that. But I felt that Milwaukee had, had given me everything that I could get there and I was ready to move on. So I just had a list of other cities that I thought would be interesting to live in and I'm like, okay, I'll send a tape. and just hold it, really reaching. Working out is a big part of my life. I want a healthy heart, I want the energy. I need the stress reduction to help me deal with my job. But I didn't have to do all this when I first started working here. I love to work. I love my career and I love working and I love pulling into the station and walking into the newsroom. It's news so you literally never know what could happen and it's like always being ready and I think it's good to always be ready. The Fox Den, I remember what it looked like the first day I came for my interview and obviously the trees were not as tall as they are now. And it was just like, wow, this really looks like the big time. That was 40 years ago. President Ronald Reagan, the 40th president of the United States, has accepted his party's nomination for a second term. Channel 4 was looking for a new anchor at 10 o'clock. So I get this call from Alan Levy asking me to send a tape. And I'm like, OK, I'll send a tape. I sent the tape. Then they flew me down for an interview. I did an audition. Then I left. Um, it was like a one-day thing. And I thought, hey, I'm grateful for the opportunity, and I hope I get the job, but I don't know. And then I got the phone call and said, we want you to be part of our 10 o'clock anchor team um, Monday through Friday. From Channel 4, Dallas and Fort Worth, the 10 o'clock news with Chip Moody, Clarice Tinsley, Wayne Shattuck, and Dale Hansen. So to know that I'm working as a journalist, but then you also have these ties or these brushes with these stories that go national or international, that's a very, it's very personal. Happy New Year! I'm Clarice Tinsley of KDFW-TV, right here in Dallas-Fort Worth. I'll be on the sidelines today bringing you all the color and excitement of the 35th Annual Cotton Bowl Parade. I got to go to Berlin to cover the fall of the Berlin Wall, December 1989. And they gave us chisels, and, and I got to chisel part of the Berlin Wall. And then people are just giving us pieces of the Berlin Wall that I brought back to Dallas. The first assignment I had was going to the Super Bowl to cover the Dallas Cowboys. Good evening from Kuwait City. I went this to Operation uh, Desert Storm uh, in the no Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and then driving into Kuwait with Max Stacy and Tim Ryan. It was amazing to be that far away from Dallas, away from home, in a different country, different language, different religion. When they found out we were from Dallas, what did they want to know? Do you know JR? Do you know Sue Ellen? Do you know the Dallas Cowboys? Do you have an oil well in your backyard? And that's what they associated with us when they saw us. They were also very impressed that we had traveled as far as we had to be able to go to their city to tell their story. That was a, that was a very powerful thing. The story locally, 
for me was the 911 call of Larry Boff. Would you please send an ambulance here? To 911, the city of Dallas. His stepmother, Lillian Boff, was not able to breathe. They were in her home, in her living room. She was choking, she couldn't breathe, she was turning blue. He called 911 for help. The nurse dispatcher argued with him and hung up on him. But Lillian Boff died before the ambulance arrived. He called me on a Friday night in January and said that this had happened. So it took one, one month of investigation to do all the background before we could put the story on the air. We aired it that night at six o'clock. We got immediate 800 phone calls. People who were horrified, people who were angry, people who said, you think that's bad? Let me tell you what happened when I called for 911. We aired the same story at 10 o'clock and got like 1,100 different phone calls. I mean, the phones were ringing off the hook. Networks picked it up, CBS, NBC, um, Nightline, and then it went national. The city of Dallas, after our story aired, conducted its own investigation. And based on that, the system changed. It's regrettable that a woman had to die in order for that to happen, but the system changed. And for me, that has been the most impactful story that, that I've personally covered in my career. We were listening when you said you wanted more positive stories in the news. I love spiral notebooks, I love reporter's notebooks, and I have the first reporter's notebook from Clarice's Hometown Heroes. Started in 1995, and my very first hometown hero, Priscilla Hartman. Four mornings a week, Priscilla Hartman leaves her home in the State Thomas area to catch a 7.30 bus bound for Parkland Hospital. She was 89 years old, and she volunteered at Parkland Hospital. Life isn't all negative, it's a balance. And I just felt as a station we needed to remind people of that balance that exists. So I went to my news director and I said, hey, I think I'd like to do this. I think this is something that would be valuable for people and I wanna do it. So he's like, okay, who you got in mind? Uh, I don't know, I gotta work on it because I wasn't expecting to get the green light right away, right? Because I knew the person had to be like brilliant in order for, for management to get the idea, to get the vision. So Princella Hartman was brilliant. She was um, African American, maybe about this tall, beautiful silver hair in a bun. She had the glasses on the pearl necklace, just everybody's grandmother. She was perfect, management got it. I consider her the mother of Clarice's hometown heroes. Priscilla Hartman lived to be 107 years old. Hartman Street in Uptown Dallas is named after her because she truly is a humanitarian. She was a humanitarian. And I owe a great deal of, of gratitude to that lady because she's the one who made my franchise possible. She gives up herself. It's not about her. She's just the messenger. And how she can step back and allow others to tell their stories. And, and one of the ways she does it is obviously by being a good listener and being patient and letting that person tell their story. And, the, and, and I see a lot of this not only on camera, but I see a lot of it off camber. I have a great life. I'm very, very grateful that I get to walk through life with Stephen Giles. And I take these 31 years as the best years of my life. Stephen Giles is the guy who is from Dallas, Texas, grew up here, and um, got very lucky and landed a fabulous job in television production. And then one day I get invited to a party and I walk in the front door and I see this woman sitting on the sofa and it's Clarice Tinsley and I think, I'm gonna go over and say hello. Say hello. It wasn't like, oh, that's Clarice on TV. That's like, that's Clarice, I wanna go talk to her. And I could tell that he wasn't enamored of the fact that that's what I did for a living. And so that made it really wonderful for me. And then he's very handsome and he's fabulous. It's great. So. My husband is very important to me. As public as my work life is, that's how private my private life is. Because 
even though I do post on social media, I do believe in boundaries and I do think there still needs to be mystery. Social media has played a huge role because she was an early adopter on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, all the social media sites that she's constantly working that social media 24-7. And I remember once we'd been out and she was taking pictures and of me and everything. And I said, hey, do we have to document everything? Yes, we do. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's interesting how the news business has changed with Twitter being a very big part of it. It's a big part. It's a big way to reach people and you know, let them know what's going on, let them know what you're doing, another way to engage, you have that touch point. And, you know, it's information that's, that's, that's credible and that's important. I feel really good about that, knowing that, that we're putting out responsible things. I don't know if I would change anything because that's who she is and that's who she's always been. You know, there's always a moment in someone's life where a light bulb goes off and they figure out, oh, that's it. You know, that's exactly what I want to do. And when she told me the story about growing up in Detroit and when the riots were in Detroit in the 60s and her mother gave her a notebook and a pen and asked her to document it, at that time she became a journalist. And she still has that notebook today. And so that's who she is. That's a part of her DNA. That's who has made her who she is. I am so glad I'm doing this. On top of the world up here, 14 minutes. I've got weight. We always believe that we should do things that scare the crap out of us. To get out of your comfort zone and to reinvent yourself. And so one day, my wife comes to me and says, you know, I think I'm going to join the choir. And I go like, really? Yeah. She says, you know, a person that sings praise twice. I sing in the choir and that's like the best part of my week because it really helps fill me with things that I need to remember as we walk through the week of what can happen in the world of news. And it, so much of it can be heartbreaking, just absolutely heartbreaking what happens to people. A beloved liquor store owner murdered during a robbery. Is She's human, and so when she comes home, person. you know, she'll tell me about it and how that sometimes can be emotionally draining. But you have to have the tools to be able to bounce back from that and to do it again and again and again at a high level. And I think that that's one of the keys that have made Clarice very good at what she does, and that is being consistently consistent. So people know what they're going to get. Yeah, I was like, that's Clarice Tinsley! <laughs> What's your name? My name's Macy. Nice the most you, interesting thing about that is the voice. Because we could be in a supermarket line, or a movie theater line, or somewhere, and Clarice and I could be talking, and they hear that voice, they're going, like, you're Clarice! I am always always grateful when people stop me because they don't have to. <laughs> I am always grateful when people speak because they don't have to. I am always willing to take a picture and sign the autograph because people don't have to do it. And that's me getting to be an ambassador not just for my career, but for the entire station. So I'm always willing and very, very happy to do that. us to be the best every single day and I take a lot of pride in that I have a great deal of respect for the people I work with because it's hard it's really hard and we work really well together under circumstances that are very trying on a deadline basis under deadline pressure I like to be uh, camera ready 
when I leave home because you never know what could happen once I hit the newsroom. So I've always got my makeup on and then I just touch up before I go on the air. I'll get ready to do my Your Turn Live. And then after that, 10 o'clock live. I love what I do. I, I feel so grateful and happy and proud to have this career that can inform people, that can truly make a difference in people's lives. And tonight's your turn to... I never think about retirement. I don't know what that word means. It's like these last 40 years have gone by so quickly. It's amazing to think about how much time has transpired, how many stories, how many newscasts. And I still love it. One minute. I love it as much as I did the very first day I started, and, and I'm very grateful to be able to have that kind of feeling. Good evening, I'm Clarice Tinsley. We'll have to wait until at least Friday. For me, it is very large and very intimate at the same time. Good evening, I'm Clarice Tinsley, first on Fox News at 10. So I never say, good evening, everyone, because while I am speaking to everyone, I want you to know I'm talking directly to you. So that's why I work to make it very personal. Good newscast, strong newscast. Good evening, I'm Clarice Tinsley. I'm talking to you.